so yeah, let's talk about that. The Ruby Volume 9 teaser finally dropped, and it doesn't look like we saw anything of John in it. Or did we? First of all, allow me to introduce myself. I am Nerdly Delicious. Welcome to my channel. This wasn't what I intended to be the first video on my channel, but the teaser trailer for Volume 9, along with a sneak peek at the first episode, has shifted my priorities somewhat. Regardless, a quick rundown of my channel and what I'll be uploading here, and then we'll get into my wild and wacky speculations. I've been a fan of Ruby for several years now, and while I know reception to the show is mixed at times, I myself am firmly in the camp of loving it. I'll be doing videos on the world of Ruby, examining and breaking down aspects of the world in lore videos, along with theory videos, and I'll be uploading audiobook productions of my own fanfictions, the first of which isn't far off. I also have a Patreon, but that can wait until the end of the video. With introductions out of the way, let's get to the subject of this video. Is the armored figure we saw in the Volume 9 teaser John? And if so, what's happened to him? He's clearly changed in some significant ways. First off, is there any evidence that this figure is John, or is in some way connected to him? In short, yes. The shot we get of them is short, only about a second or two, and we only see them from the shoulders up, but what is there to see is interesting. There are two main points to focus on. The shoulder straps on the breastplate, and the built-in gorget, or whatever that little diamond-shaped piece built into his armor is. As a side-by-side -side comparison shows, these are almost identical, if not the exact same. The only real differences that I can see are that the diamond piece isn't as pointed as the one on Jean in the concept art, and that the knight's, as I'll be calling him, armor seems to be a normal steel gray rather than white. However, these are relatively minor differences. There's enough here to draw a pretty clear comparison between the two. But of course, there are differences. For one, Jean doesn't have a helmet, and the one the knight is wearing looks like it's rusted. It could be soot from all the fire he's standing in, but I'm going to go with rust for now. And if you look closely, it seems like there could be rust spots on the breastplate too, but these aren't as clear as on the helmet and could just be a result of how the fire reflects on the armor. For another, the pauldrons are different as well, but I did notice a couple similarities while I was examining the screenshot I took. Though it's not easy to tell in the provided picture here, the knight's pauldrons have diamond-shaped catches or buckles on the front, like Jean's. Additionally, you can see that on Jean's pauldrons, the bronze edge of his armor juts out some from the rest of it. And if you look directly below the flanges on the top, you can see that the edge of the knight's armor juts out in an almost identical fashion. And if you look hard enough, you can see a strip of metal that seems to be a darker color than the surrounding material, though it is hard to tell in the firelight. Which I am sure was entirely intentional on Rooster Teeth's part. But what does all this mean? Is it Jean? Is it some evil clone of him, or something that has nothing to do with him? Well, this is where we get into the theory crafting portion of the video. Do note that these being theories built using info from a 50 second teaser and a short clip of the first episode, odds are a lot of what I suggest here is almost certainly going to miss the mark. There's so little we know about Volume 9 that I could be completely off and just not realize it yet. This is fully my own speculations and guesses. There are a few possibilities of who or what this is. I'll go over each, and at the end talk about which one I personally hope it is, and how I think his story on the island might go. First, it's Jean. It is straight up our boy Jean Arc in a brand new getup. The question is, why? What's happened to him? Why is his helmet, and possibly the rest of his armor, so rusted? Has he somehow been on the island longer than the others? Or did he find it while exploring and decide to wear it for whatever reason? Has the death of Penny driven him to become more extreme and more motivated than ever to stop Salem and take revenge on Cinder? Or is he being controlled in some way? Second, it's John's evil doppelganger. We've seen that things in the Ever After, the big island that Team Ruby, John, and Neo all landed on, seem to be affected by emotion. I'll be going into detail about the sneak peek in a later video, but when Ruby sits down and starts crying, the weather very suddenly turns to rain. And when she cheers up, the skies clear. 
if everyone's emotions have this effect on the ever after, well, Jean is probably not in the most stable mind state right now, considering he very recently, at least in terms of what's happened in the show, had to mercy kill Penny. This night figure could be a manifestation of Jean's guilt and regret over what happened, as well as his old feelings of inadequacy and weakness rearing their ugly heads again to mock him for failing Penny like he failed Pira. Thus, Jean must overcome this manifestation of his darkest fears and greatest weaknesses, and by doing so, he becomes all the stronger for it. Third, it has nothing to do with him. This one is almost certainly not going to be the case. Though the similarities between the two aren't massive, what is there is enough to form a connection, and we know that Jean is on the island. So to not see him in the trailer, but this strange figure that sports some of his features? If this character has nothing to do with Jean, I'll eat my hat. So let's get into what I hope this night figure to be. If it isn't obvious already, I want it to be Jean. Not an evil doppelganger, not an illusion or vision of the future, though I guess that would technically make it Jean anyway. Not something unrelated to him. I want and hope that it is Jean himself. But that leaves the question of just what has happened to make him like this. Has Jean turned evil? The trailer seems to hint at the knight being a bad guy. Perhaps he's become somewhat unhinged after having to kill Penny, someone who was a friend and who relied on him. Maybe he's being manipulated magically or through some good old-fashioned gaslighting. To answer that question, we need to answer another one. Namely, who's that woman standing in front of what appears to be a massive fire? We have no idea, but we can guess. And my guess is that this woman is Alex, trapped in the Ever After for... who knows how long. The image on the screen now shows what appears to be a woman walking off of the beach, perhaps having just arrived in Ever After. There's a bandage around her right leg, so she may have been injured at some point. Going back to the woman in fire, we can't really make out much details of her. Or rather, there's plenty of details we can see, but not enough to get a good idea of what she looks like. However, parts of her, the arms in particular, seem to be mechanical in nature. Makes you wonder where she got the knowledge on designing what looks like prosthetic limbs, let alone the tools and material necessary to build them. But getting back to my point, I believe that this woman and the girl on the beach are both Alex, and she's been stuck in the Ever After for a very long time. For whatever reason, she can't get out on her own, so Team Ruby, Jean, and Neo represent an opportunity to escape for her. The following is a short description of how I think such a thing could possibly go. It's light on specific details because, well, we're light on specific details for Volume 9. And I don't want to turn this video into speculation about how the whole volume is going to go. Jean arrives on the island a broken man with a broken blade. He trudges through it blindly, going nowhere and just walking because he doesn't know what else to do. He encounters the woman we see standing before the fire in the trailer, who I will be referring to as Alex as part of this speculation. Alex listens to his story and makes him a devil's bargain, power in exchange for service. She will make him strong, but he must serve her for that strength. Jean agrees, and he dons parts of an old suit of armor that she gives him, thus the rusted state of the helmet. Jean then must walk into or through a fire, which is symbolic for his illusion, Joan of Arc. Jean walks into the fire and dies metaphorically. He ceases to be who he was and becomes someone else, someone stronger, but not as caring or compassionate as Jean. Alex wants to leave the Ever After and return to Remnant. She tells Jean that she can kill Salem for good, so Jean agrees to help her. Perhaps she's lying. Or perhaps she's being truthful. Or perhaps she simply would replace one Dark Queen with another. But in the end, either in this volume or the next, Jean is saved by the others. Specifically, he's saved by Weiss, who refuses to give up on him like he's given up on himself, and takes it upon herself to drag him back from the edge, even if he's kicking and screaming the whole time. Jean saved her at Haven. It's her turn to save him. 
If you can't tell, I'm a bit of a massive White Knight fan, but I think it would be very fitting for Weiss to be the one to save him from himself just as he saved her at Haven, though in a more spiritual sense in this case. That and the others are likely not to be all that happy with him. I don't see Ruby accepting that Jean did what he had to do, and at Penny's request, no less. And I don't see Blyke or Yang thinking he made the right decision either. Only Weiss was there at the end. She knows how bad things were, and how close she herself came to dying. Ultimately, though, I do think they'll forgive him. Ruby will grieve, of course, it's only right that she should, but I think she'll come to understand that Jean was just put in an impossible situation, and that in the end, it was Penny's choice. But that's pretty much it for this video. If I go on any longer, I'll cross the line into full-on pointless rambling. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and please share your thoughts on what's going to happen with John in Ever After, if you think that armored figure in the fire was indeed him. And if you don't think it was him, then share your thoughts on who or what you think it might be, and what role you think they'll play in Volume 9. Uh, this is my first time really doing um, any kind of audio stuff, to be honest. Uh, so any feedback as to how to improve... Uh, is appreciated by anyone who has more experience in this than I do. Um, so yeah, just you know, leave that in the comments too. Uh, just if you have any advice or suggestions going forward on how to better make a video, I really will appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. I have a lot of Ruby content on the way, from lore and theory videos to more Volume 9 speculations to audio productions of my own fanfictions that I write. If you want to find those fanfictions and read them for yourself, a link to my fanfiction.net account will be in the description below, as well as a link to my Tumblr account and my Patreon if you want to support me and get rewarded in turn for your support. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and never forget to keep moving forward.